Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. It's that time of year again, December. And that means winter is coming, a close second to Christmas. The best time of year because of Santa Claus breaking and entering and leaving presents for everybody. But winter lasts through the end of December and into January. And you can't have winter without snow. The holiday season is here and it's time to be excited. Everybody says their year has been mediocre, but the Christmas season instantly puts everybody in a good mood. Everything about this time of year is just pure joy, and while everybody does things like decorating and listening to Christmas music, everybody always has some kind of thing that's just special to them during the holidays. For me personally, I always love seeing the first snowfall of the year. I just thought the snow looked beautiful, and I loved playing in snow as a kid. Also, there was a chance for snow days to occur. That doesn't happen in the summer. But unfortunately, in my neck of the woods, I hate to admit this, but I don't get a lot of white Christmases. I have had a few, don't get me wrong, but most of the time, if it does snow, it would just rain almost every Christmas Eve and the snow would be gone. And it's a true shame because everybody knows you can't spell Christmas without W-H-I-T-E. So for me, if I saw snow on Christmas morning, it just felt that much more special. Yeah, that's why I love snow so much. But since it looks like I might not get a white Christmas this year, I might as well talk about something else to get my mind off of it. Christmas is approaching fast, and I don't have much time, so you know what that means. It's time to talk about Merry Nickmas again. For those who are unfamiliar, Merry Nickmas was a series of 30 to 60 second shorts that Nickelodeon would run during commercial breaks in December. They were mini crossovers between the characters of classic Nickelodeon cartoons like the Rugrats, Rocket Power, the Wild Thornberries, Jimmy Neutron, SpongeBob, and the Fairly Odd Parents, just to name a few. These were always done as a way to advertise premieres or reruns of these shows' Christmas specials. They were shown to the public for the first time in December 2002 and were just so charming to watch. No matter how many times I say it, looking back at the good old days makes this decade seem like everybody likes the bad stuff these days. That aren't video games, of course. Last time, we took a look at Plankton's holiday hits. This short was about Plankton singing parodies of classic Christmas songs, and this in itself was a parody of real-life artists promoting their own real-life Christmas albums. That was the only short that had Spongebob characters, but my favorite part of that short was Plankton singing. This time, we'll be talking about Patrick the Snowman. This short features more than just Spongebob characters, it also features Nigel Thornberry from the Wild Thornberries and Jimmy and Carl Sheen, Cindy, Libby, and Goddard from the Adventures of Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. This short is an obvious parody of Frosty the Snowman, the Christmas specials where a snowman comes alive after a hat is placed on its head. There were a few more specials about this, as well as multiple songs from several artists based on this special. Obviously, I knew about Frosty the Snowman as a kid, way before I saw this short on TV for the first time. As for Plankton's holiday hits, I never saw any advertisement for Christmas albums on TV in real life. After I was scanned last Christmas, I think I'll be sticking to listening to Christmas music on the radio and maybe my phone from now on. That way I won't get scammed. As for Patrick the Snowman, not only do I remember seeing this as a kid, this was the short I remember seeing the most on TV. Out of all six Merry Nickmas shorts, Patrick the Snowman was the short that I recall being on TV the most, so I'd argue I have more memories from that short than most others. Unlike Plankton's Holiday Hits, this short has two different versions. There was a short version that was 30 seconds long, and a longer version that lasted 90 seconds. Unfortunately, the version of those two that was on TV more often was the short 30 second version. That was always disappointing because almost nothing happens in the short version aside from Jimmy and his friends bringing Patrick to life. But in order to explain the differences between the two versions, we have to go through them both and explain why the short version was not nearly as fun to watch as the long version. And let's get the short version out of the way first. The short started up with Nigel Thornberry narrating this tale of the first winter arriving early this year. Jimmy and his friends build a snowman that looks just like Patrick Starr. Jimmy puts on his newest invention, the Spoofinator 4000, which brings Patrick to life. The kids are surprised by Patrick coming to life. They chase him down, and that's it. <sighs> that's how I react whenever I see the short version. The short version was only 30 seconds long, and it ends by cutting out most of the story the short is supposed to have. Now for the longer version. 
It starts out the same way as the short version. After Patrick is brought to life, this time the kids cheer and start to have fun with him. However, Patrick started to overstay his welcome after a minute. As he always does. The end of winter was a long way away, so they had to come up with a way to get rid of him. Jimmy planned on creating a wormhole to propel him into the distant future. Cindy suggested melting him, but the others didn't agree. I don't know if that would have worked. I've never seen a starfish melt before. They decided to send him into the future. 70 years later, the kids were in the Retroville Retirement Community Home where they encountered Patrick again. Patrick then pokes Nigel Thornberry, who is now a skeleton, and that was the end of the short. See? I told you the short version was bad. The longer version was so much more entertaining to watch. Personally, I never understood why the shorter version had to exist. There was nothing particularly memorable about it compared to the 90 second version. I don't know about you, but I never knew anybody who actually liked the 30 second version more than the 90 second one. So I think it's obvious that nobody saw the short version and said, YES! The bad version of Patrick the Snowman. The longer version had more going on, and Patrick annoying the Jimmy Neutron characters was funny. I really liked the part where Patrick was saying, POKE! 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 while poking Carl with a stick. I always thought it was funny, and that was one of the biggest reasons why I always wanted to see the long version and never really liked the short version. Besides, since Patrick wore Libby's dress and poked Nigel Thornberry's skeleton, just goes to show that the shorter version was unnecessary. Whenever watching either of the shorts, you can't tell which version is playing until after Patrick is brought to life. If it's the long version, not only are the Jimmy Neutron characters happy at this point, but so am I. If it's the short version, it's a shot of Cindy, and the kids scream and chase after Patrick. Patrick's face right here pretty much describes me whenever I find out the version I was watching was the short version. However, I did recently discover the critical difference between the long and short versions that come up at the beginning. At the start of the good version, Nigel Thornberry slips and falls in the snow, while in the bad version, he doesn't. Apparently, that's the way to denote the long and short versions at the very beginning. And I do not know how I did not notice that as a child. And since the short version ends almost immediately after Patrick is brought to life, why would Nickelodeon even bother making two different versions of this short? It would really be better if they made one or the other. And the version they should have made obviously should have been the 90 second version. Even if it was the short that came on the least out of all six of these shorts, it would have made every time that short came on that much better. You'd go in expecting a 90 second clip every time and get it. Every time. If they only made the short version, it would probably be everybody's least favorite Mary Nickmas short, myself included. Also, I don't know why, but the shot of Sheen shivering was always lodged in the back of my brain and would always pop into my brain whenever I think about the Mary Nickmas shorts throughout elementary school. Also, fun fact, Bill Fagerbakke, the voice of Patrick Starr, would later voice Frosty the Snowman in the 2004 direct-to-video movie The Legend of Frosty the Snowman. Additionally, after re-watching this online recently, I discovered that Patrick said, Birthday happy, after he's brought to life. Birthday happy! Every time I saw this growing up, I thought Patrick said, Birthday hug, whenever he's brought to life. I'm honestly surprised that he was saying something different than what I thought he actually said. Did anybody else think he said birthday hug when they watched this as a kid? Anybody out there? No. Just me? Okay. Even though I discovered he said something else than what I thought he said as a kid, that doesn't take away the fact that this is still a really good short. I didn't like that the 30 second version appeared more often than the good version. You can bet that I was happy whenever the 90 second version came on. You could argue that the short version makes the good version that much more special whenever it comes on, but for me, I often just go in hoping to see the 90 second version, but then the bad version comes on and would crush my hopes and dreams. It would eventually get to a point where I would expect the bad version, and then the good version comes on. Then the next time this short is shown, I would get the 30 second version and the cycle repeats. I will always love the long version because I like seeing Patrick interacting with the Jimmy Neutron characters and the funny ending where Jimmy and his friends are old and meet Patrick again. While the CGI in this short can look a little cheap, I think that oddly gives it its own charm. It's hard to describe, but I do think it's a neat quirk and does kind of make it stand out compared to most, if not all, of the other shorts. 
It may not be as big a crossover short as something like The 12 Days of Nickmas, but that's not a bad thing. It's another thing that makes this as good as it is. Not everything needs to be a massive crossover like The 12 Days of Nickmas, and not everything has to be just one character from one show like Plankton's Holiday Hits. There's not a whole lot else to this short, but I think that's okay. I really like it because I like Jimmy Neutron and Patrick Starr, and it's cool seeing these characters interact. Even though I hated when the bad version would come on instead of the good version, that doesn't take anything away from how much I always enjoyed watching the good version. It's cute and charming, and I love all the characters in this. I don't think I'd say it's my absolute favorite of the Merry Nickmas shorts, especially since they're all good. But I still have some great memories, and it will always be charming to watch again. The good version, that is. Well, that was a nice talk. I like Spongebob characters and Jimmy Neutron characters, so that was a good short. And we're closer to Christmas now too, so I'm going to go outside and see if there's any snow now. Nope. Still no snow. That's upsetting. But things could always be worse. I could be stuck not watching the Spongebob Christmas specials or any of my favorite Christmas movies, and that would just be horrid. But since Nickelodeon doesn't show the Merry Nickmas shorts anymore, I don't have to worry about getting stuck with something I don't want. Except if I buy a pair of earbuds where the headphone port will not fit in the headphone jack of my current iPhone. 